everyone. In this video, we'll be talking about Newton's first law of motion. In the previous video, we have already discussed about the Galileo's experiment and his observations. And from that experiment, he has drawn a conclusion, which was this. That is, it is the tendency of a body to oppose any change in its state of rest or of motion. Now, this means that it is the property of a body to oppose or to resist a change in its state of rest or motion or the state in which it is currently existing. Now, suppose a body is at rest uh, for the time being. Now, this body which is at rest would continue to be at rest and it is the tendency of that body or the property of that body to be at rest and this body would resist any change in the state of rest which means that it would resist any movement and the body which is in motion resists any change in its state of motion which means that it would resist to come to a stop. So this is what was the conclusion of Galileo from his experiment. Now this tendency is known as inertia. Inertia, uh, inertia is basically a property of a body by virtue of which it resists a change in its state of motion or rest. Now this conclusion of Galileo formed a basis for another scientist whose name was Sir Isaac Newton and based on that he formulated three laws of motion. So these three laws of motion which were proposed by uh, this scientist that is Sir Isaac Newton are popularly known as Newton's laws of motion. So in this video we will be concerned only about the first law of motion and the rest of the two laws we will be learning in the upcoming videos. So let us see what this first law of motion is all about. So according to the first Newton's first law of motion it states that an object remains in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled to change that state by an applied force. So this law basically means that uh, an object continues to be in its currently existing state. The state can be a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line and it resists any change in that state of rest. Now, when will the change come? The change comes, uh, the change in the state of the body arises when there is an externally applied force and until an externally applied force acts onto that body, the body stays in the same state itself. Now, this law is basically an extension of the Galileo's conclusion which showed the tendency of a body that is what we called as inertia. So this law is popularly known as inertia that is the law of inertia because this law shows the property of the body and that property is the property of inertia that is to resist any change in the currently existing state. So inertia is what we call as the tendency of the undisturbed objects, the objects on which the ex uh, there is no externally applied force to stay in the same state of rest or uniform motion. Now in order to study this law, in order to understand this law, we need to uh, first understand the three aspects of this law. So let us look at all those three aspects. The first one is that an object remains to be remains in a state of rest unless compelled to change that state by an applied force. Now this says that an object, suppose the object is at rest, then it would resist the, a change in a state of rest. That means it would resist any movement. And how long it can resist movement? It can resist movement only up to the time when an, uh, when an applied force acts on it. Now when an applied force acts on it, it is compelled to change its state and thus it changes its state of rest. So this is what we call as the inertia of rest. That is the property of a body which is at rest to remain at rest. Similarly, the second aspect is that 
that an object remains in the state of uniform motion unless it is compelled to change that state by an applied force. Now this aspect shows the tendency of a body to continue in the state of or to remain in the state of uniform motion unless an externally applied force acts on it to change that state of uniform motion. So this aspect is known as the inertia of motion. And the third aspect uh, is this, which says that an object continues to move in a straight line unless compelled to change its direction by an applied force. Now suppose an object is moving in a particular direction and if it has to change its direction, then there has to be an externally applied force acting onto it. Otherwise, it would move in the same direction all the time because it is the tendency of an object to move in the same direction unless an externally applied force acts on it. So this is known as the inertia of direction. Now let us look at the examples in all these three categories for a better understanding. So first one is the inertia of rest which was the tendency of all bodies to resist a change in their state of rest. Now suppose I have a football which I have kept on this table in a room and I lock the room and I go away. Now suppose I come after three hours to the same room and look for this football. Where do you think will the football be? It will be in the same place itself where I have placed it three hours before. So this happens because it is the tendency of this body that is it is the tendency of this football to be in the same state of rest unless someone comes and disturbs it and this disturbance is what we call as the externally applied force unless there is no disturbance or there is no externally applied force an object remains in the same state of rest and the moment an externally applied force acts on this object it starts to change its state because it is compelled to change its state by this externally applied force now suppose i lock the room and i come after 10 years to the same room to look for this football what do you think will be the football's condition yes that would that will not look clean of course but the football will be there in the same position and this is because of its inertia of rest and that has made it stay in the same position for this long time. So this is an example of the inertia of rest or the tendency of a body to maintain the same state of rest. Now suppose after 10 years when I see this football, I quickly go ahead and, and I, and I uh, kick this football. Then what would happen? This football will fall down to the ground, on the ground. So this was because I have applied force onto it by kicking, kicking on it. And this externally applied force that I have applied by kicking makes this football to move. So from this we can conclude that its tendency of rest was its property uh, that, we call, that we have called as the inertia of rest. And this inertia, this state of rest is disturbed when an externally applied force acts on an object which is at rest. Now let us move to the second aspect that is the inertia of motion which is the tendency of a body to be in the same state of uniform motion unless an externally applied force acts on it to change that state. Now for, for example we can take a truck which is moving in a straight road like this with the same velocity. Now uh, if this truck has to increase or decrease its velocity, the accelerator has to be used. Otherwise this truck will be moving with the same speed or the same velocity throughout the journey in the same direction. So if this uh, truck has to change its state of uniform motion to any other state, Let's say it has, to, it has to stop somewhere or it has to increase or decrease its speed or it has to perform a non-uniform motion somewhere. Then in that case, 
there has to be an externally applied force otherwise that it will continue to move with the same velocity throughout in the same direction so this is an example of the inertia of motion in the same way we can take a football which is moving in a straight line and this is an example of the inertia of motion now if the football has to uh, has to move with a faster velocity then it has to be kicked again and again and if it is not kicked again and again it moves with the same velocity so these were the examples of inertia of motion now let's move ahead to study the inertia of direction now this is the tendency of a body to continue moving in a straight uh, line or the or in a particular direction unless an externally applied force acts on it and compels it to change that particular direction in which it was moving now suppose a ball is moving in a particular direction a tennis ball and it was hit by a player now this player hits the ball and changes its direction now this tennis ball was moving with a particular velocity was thrown at this player with a particular velocity and this direction of this tennis ball is changed by the force which this uh, player exerts with his tennis racket so this is a good example to show the inertia of direction of a body in which the body changes its direction when a force acts on to it so this is all about the first law of motion which is the newton's first law of motion so in this video we have learned that it is the property of a body to be in the same state of rest of uniform motion in a straight line unless it is compelled by an externally applied force to change that state we have also looked at three kinds of inertia which were the inertia of rest inertia of motion and inertia of direction so i hope the video was helpful to you and it was fully understandable to you thanks for watching tutorialspoint.com simply easy learning